Hey, what's going on everyone? Indy here with Ultimate Tour Reviews. And you know what? Congratulations for clicking on this video. Uh, if you're, of course, looking how to change your fuel filter in your first generation Tacoma and you have a four cylinder engine, I know it's a really hard job to do. I, I wouldn't say it's like too hard, but it's definitely not easy or, you know, intermediate type of job here. It definitely requires a bit of patience and of course the right tools. Now in the pin comment, I'm going to leave a, a bunch of hints, a couple other videos. I recommend watching a couple other videos by a few other YouTubers. Don't just watch mine. There's a lot of other useful tips, useful comments in those videos as well too. Um, I've heard some people say this job can take up to like eight hours, which I don't know how that's possible. There may, there's a couple ways to do this wrong. And of course, you know, have it take way longer than it has to. I've seen guys take off the entire intake. I've seen actually people take off just the uh, two uh, side screws of that filter and try to pull it out that way. Uh, the best option I have found is to remove it as a full assembly. It sounds a bit more complicated. It's actually a lot simpler to do than taking off just the filter, those two bolts, leave those on, take off the two assembly bolts that are going to be the fuel lines, and I'm going to show you where all that is, show you all the tools you're going to need to do this job, and it's really not that bad. It took me about an hour 10 to do it the first time, maybe a little bit less time than that, but I can probably do it again now with well under 30 minutes now. Um, the biggest trick I'm going to show you guys is having the right tools. No, I'm not going to say go and buy a Snap-on or Mac tool or anything crazy. You can do this with a lot of just basic tools. There is one tool, though, that I will say do not skip this tool. And it's going to be one of the first tools you're going to need, a flare nut wrench. Do not skip buying a flare nut wrench for this job. And I'll show you why here in just a second. This is what you're going to do to take off the first fuel line. Do not use a regular wrench like one of these guys to take this off. Your chances of stripping that first bolt are very high. If you strip that first bolt, just take it to a mechanic at that point. You don't want to keep messing with that at that point. Buy a flare nut wrench set. I found one of the cheapest wrench sets on Amazon. Uh, they're made by a company called is CD is the brand name here. It's kind of can't really even read it on this uh, wrench too well here. It's kind of blurry. Uh, but anyways, CD, I'll leave a link in the description, guys, for that one or a link in the comment for this one. Um, pretty affordable. They're more expensive than Harbor Freight, believe it or not, which is kind of funny. But you're going to need a 14 millimeter flare nut wrench. This makes this all the easier here to have a flare nut wrench here. So definitely recommend pick up this. This is the one key tool to definitely pick up so you don't strip out that first screw. So let me show you guys that. We're going to go through every single tool here and every single step to do this job. I want to show you guys all the tips that I use. I, I did a ton of research on this on forums, watch other videos. I'll leave a lot of that links and uh, in the links and videos down in the description or down in the comments as well. So you guys can do this as easy as I think I did it one of the easiest ways possible here. So let me show you guys the first uh, step here is going to be with the flare nut wrench. All right, so you're going to open your hood, of course. Now, the two fuel lines you're going to get to, your first one you want to do, which is, I would say, the hardest, is going to be right down here. As you can see, here's my engine bay. Right here is my battery. Of course, before you begin doing this, take off your battery. You want to make sure that the battery is not in here. It definitely makes it easier because you're going to need to access this area a bit down here. You also don't want to have anything with sparks. Whenever you're messing with a fuel system, take out the battery. Now, some people will say to uh, depressurize the fuel system. I did it when I did this one. I had just a couple of little drops of fuel coming out because my filter was really badly clogged. So I was definitely having a fuel issue there, but you could of course depressurize the fuel system and uh, that's up to you on that one. But take your battery out, definitely wanna be safe there. But let me show you guys, right here is gonna be your first fuel line. So right here is that flare nut right there. That's gonna be a 14 millimeter. And then I just used a uh, regular slip groove pliers to hold the other side and you're going to want to take that bolt out. Let me make sure you guys get a nice clear photo of that right there. So you're going to want to of course get a nice slip groove pliers on this bolt here and you're going to get that 14 millimeter right here and then you can of course take that off. It was quite the fight to get this thing off. It was, I mean it fought me the entire way. This was probably the one of the hardest parts of this job here. Not because it was super difficult to get to, but because it's just such a tight space in here and you know you gotta really wrench this thing the whole way out. This thing was definitely the first kind of pain in the butt there. All right, and sorry, I forgot to mention, of course, the other larger bolt there is gonna be a 19 millimeter. Forgot to pull this wrench out. You can use a slip groove pliers, kind of whatever pliers you got to really get a good grip on there. Or if you got a 19 millimeter wrench hanging around, this is also really easy to do. But the important part is, is having that flare nut wrench. That's the key here. You can kind of use whatever you want for that other 19 millimeter nut there, but 
flare nut wrench, that is the one tool that you must get for this job. You do not want to strip that one fuel line bolt there. So let's move on to the next step. We're going to take out the other fuel line that's going to be on the top of the engine. This one is easy to get out, but it's a rather tricky to get back in. And let me show you here. All right, so this next bolt here, this one's easy to get out, but of course a little difficult to get back in. This is going to need at least one extension. Grab the smallest socket you have that is six point. Definitely grab a six point. I wouldn't do a, I would, would not do a 12 point on this one. It's going to be a 17 millimeter and let's grab a regular ratchet. This one's not usually that tight. Let me show you where this one is at. So, all right, we have the engine bay here. This one's a little tricky to find the first time if you're watching a couple of videos, but I want to really show you guys clearly where this is. Here's your engine bay. Here's your battery. Go diagonal from your battery right up into here, and it's going to be right down in here. It's kind of tough to see, but it's right there is going to be your other fuel line. Now, what I mean by is it tricky is because this little bunch of cables here sits in the way of how this thing gets in there. So you got to kind of push that out of the way. And now I'm on that bolt and I can now loosen that up. Getting it back in there is a little tricky to do. It took me a little bit of extra time to get that back in there. But once you figure it out, it's really not too bad. And that's how you get that on there. Of course, you can see it's a little tricky to even get that off there. But let me get you guys a better view. All right, so starting from the top of the engine, battery is right here. We're going to go all the way back here and right there is going to be your bolt. It's not that one to the left right here. It's not that one. It's going to be that one right in there. That's going to be your second fuel line. That's going to allow you then to, of course, remove the entire fuel filter assembly in one go. Now there is two more bolts, the bolts that hold the fuel filter up against the engine. That's where it gets the trickiest. Let me show you how that's done. Okay, so once you got the two fuel lines disconnected, again, not too tricky. The first one will definitely fight you a little bit on that flare nut wrench if it's never been removed before, which I'm pretty sure my fuel filter was likely original. And that one, of course, fought me pretty good there. Um, I put a little bit of oil in those in those uh, bolts where I put them back in to help them go in a little bit smoother. Kind of helped, not too bad there. But of course, after you get that second one out, and that's going to be that 17 millimeter there, you're not gonna be on to the tricky yet kind of crazy next part here. So I used a combination of different wrenches, or sorry, different extensions here. Uh, I used a couple of universal joints. I would say get at least two that you're gonna use. Now I didn't have two three inch universal joints. So I used a half inch and then of course a couple of adapters to throw it on there as well too. Um, the bolts did fight me a little bit, so I did use a ratchet for them, but you might want to also use an impact just to kind of knock them loose quick. So I did do that because you're holding these at such a weird angle in there. You can't really, you know, get a good amount of force on there when you're holding that extension way, way in there. So I did use an impact, had really no issues there. Now, let me show you guys the best way to get to those two retaining bolts that hold on that fuel filter. So first things first, take the driver's side wheel off. It sounds a little crazy, but it makes this job significantly easier. You can't get through this fuel filter from the top or the bottom of the engine. You got to go through this wheel well here. So jack it up quick, take that tire off, no big deal. Now I'm going to set the camera right here and let me show you guys what you have to do. Now if you're wondering, hey, my wheel well doesn't look as open as you know what you're seeing right now, that's because you got to take off this little cover here. It's super easy to take off. It's no big deal. You can pull it right out, put it back on. Super easy to do. It takes just a couple of seconds. It's a lot thinner than you think it is. Comes out really nicely. All right, so we're going to be getting right in there. And let me get this camera aligned here for you. All right, so it's a little tricky to even get my camera in here. It's really tight. Um, so as you can see right up in here, right there is my fuel filter. Of course, I've already changed this out. Um, I got a newer, it's like a, I forgot the brand name of this filter, but it's the all black filter right there. Now you can see the bottom bolt pretty easily. That's the one that's easy to get to. I recommend starting with the top bolt though, because that's going to be your hardest bolt to get to. And of course, I got, I'll show you guys again the extensions and all the universal joints that I use to get to it, but have an impact handy just in case you know, you're, you got your hand in here, you're getting, you're kind of got to get it up there. You can't even really see that bolt up there to get to it. And it's really tricky. That's why I use an impact to just knock it loose quick. And then I grab my ratchet and got the rest of it undone. There's your bottom bolt right there to get to. And then of course, the next question is, how do you get that whole assembly out of there? Well, I was actually able to basically pull that one fuel line that was in the back of the engine, which is right there. I was able to pull that fuel line down and I was able to pull the whole assembly towards me. 
and then you can take it up where the battery is. Well, of course, remove the battery when you're doing this as well, but when you take the battery out, you can actually get the entire fuel filter and assembly up to the top of the engine that way. Okay, so of course, once you can now get that fuel filter out, it's, it's almost impossible to almost film that. It's so tight in there. And of course, you have to have two hands just to kind of get your ratchet and extension in there. It's, it's a crazy thing, but once you get the top bolt off, you're good to go. Now, once you get that whole fuel assembly out, you're gonna have two bolts on each side of that fuel filter that hold those lines in. They're both gonna be 17 millimeter bolts. I just grabbed two 17 millimeter ratcheting wrenches, and of course, you can get those out no problem. Uh, the second thing to make sure you're doing is there's gonna be two little copper washers in that bag. Swap those out. You wanna use the new copper washers. Do not forget to put the copper washers on that fuel filter and put it back in. It's going to leak right away. So make sure you put those in. Now, I did have a little bit of a leak in my fuel filter because I didn't tighten those down tight enough. I had one bolt that I just didn't, couldn't get it tight enough, and it was on one of the sides of that fuel filter. I was able to get in there with one of these wrenches and get that thing tightened down a little bit more. Now, one thing that this is my opinion on this, guys. I, I'm not saying I recommend doing this at all, but I did it because this is a farm truck. I never put the top bolt of that fuel filter back in. That's the trickiest bolt to get to of anything on this whole job here. So I left that bolt out. I put the bottom bolt in and I'm just like, I'm just going to send it at that point. You know, it's had no issues at all. It still stayed in there totally fine. It hasn't moved or anything. Um, but again, though, it's, that's my opinion, guys. You can do it if you want, but I don't recommend it. Of course, it's, there's two bolts there for a reason, but I plan out to change that fuel filter, of course, every probably 20, 30,000 miles myself going forward. And that top bolt just makes it a huge, you know, pain in the butt. With no top bolt there, I could probably do this again well, well under 30 minutes by just taking the bottom bolt out and, of course, the front and rear fuel lines. That makes it significantly easier. Another optional tool you can use is some type of penetrating oil. Again, I didn't use this on any of the bolts, but I would definitely say definitely use it if you got it, especially that first uh, fuel line that you're going to use that flare nut wrench on. That thing was the hardest bolt to get off. That thing was just, it was, I wouldn't say it was stuck on there, but it was extremely tight. That took a lot of, you know, finagling to get that out of there. That would be the hardest one. If I was going to do it again, I'd probably put some penetrating oil on there and try to get that a little bit looser. So that's kind of another little tip there, guys. And then that's about it. It's really not that complicated to do. It's just having the right tools. Now, nothing you need here tool-wise is going to be like anything expensive. You don't need Snap-on or anything crazy. You can do this with just whatever tools you want to buy. Cobalt, Craftsman, Husky, doesn't matter. The only tool I recommend, of course, getting, and I can't stress this enough, get a flare nut wrench. I'll throw a link in the description, guys. It's one of the cheapest ones I've seen, and this thing worked flawlessly. You can see that there's like no damage on this tool at all. This thing worked fantastic for getting that off. I didn't strip that nut or anything. It just worked great. And then, of course, once you're done here, you can put that whole thing back on there. I chose to just kind of keep it off. I'm going to, of course, do a bit more work in there. You can access the starter from here pretty easily, too. It's not too bad. Uh, but again, that is the one of the dumbest designs for a fuel filter, in my opinion. It's just ridiculous that it's there. But at least, though, you can access it. And guys, I'm not a mass mechanic. I'm not even a mechanic at all, guys. Um, I'd say I'm like a 2 out of 10 mechanical skill. But if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. And guys, thanks for watching the video, guys. This is, it's, it's one of those jobs where, you know, it seems really, really tricky. It is a little tricky, you know, it definitely is, but you can definitely do it with some patience. Make sure you get all the tools you need ready to go. And of course, you know, just knowing how to do it. If you guys got any questions, let me know in the comments, guys. I'll put a bunch of stuff in the pinned comments to help you guys out. Some more videos, watch other videos too. Don't just watch mine. Check out other videos. You know, it's definitely, you know, the more you know, the better off you're going to be doing on this job, the faster you can go. Because it's just, you know, one of those jobs where it just requires a bunch of, you know, little puzzles here to do this one big puzzle is how I would say it. And finally, I replaced all my vac lines in the engine here. I'll leave a link in the description, guys. You want, want to find this kit. It comes with all the lines you're actually going to need. You will need to cut these, of course, to length, but it's not a big deal. It's a really easy fix for a lot of vac issues I was having. Just do all new vac lines. You can kind of see where my light is down there. That kind of gives you a hint of where that fuel filter is. Yeah, it's definitely under the intake. You can kind of see it through here, that little black filter down there. It's, it's a tricky one, but you guys can definitely do it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. So I'm definitely not a skilled mechanic by any means, but I was able to get to it. And of course, if you want to leave that top bolt off, that makes it significantly easier to get to again. 
Although I wouldn't recommend it, guys. It is there for a reason, but this is my farm truck. It doesn't go on a road or anything. It doesn't really do anything crazy. I don't really exceed ever 30 miles an hour anyways. So I figure it'll be totally fine at that point. But guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys can do this. If you have any questions, let me know in the, in the comments below, guys. I'll do my best to answer you for your questions. And thanks for watching, guys. Take care.